Perenche Crucis, Aco Benedicta, sit nobis salus, sit vita, in nomine Patris, sit Pidit, Spiritus Sancti, Amen. Gaudiamus et exultemus demus gloriam Deo. Quanem riniabit Dominus Deus noster omnipotens. Alleluia. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Dominus pobiscum et com Spiritu Tuo. Fratres, Agnus camus picata nostra, ut aptissimus et sacra misteria celebranda. Confitio Dei Onnipotenti et bobis fratres, qui apicabin imis cogitatione verbo opere et omissione. Mea culpa, mea culpa, mea maxima culpa. Idio precor beata Mariam semper virginem, omnis angelos et sanctos, et vos fratres, orare pro me ad dominum Deum nostrum. Misteriatur nostri onnipotens Deus, et demisis picatis nostris, perducat nos ad vitam eternam. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christi eleison, Christi eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Oremus. Almighty God, as we celebrate the resurrection, may we share with each other the joy of the risen Christ who won for us. Per Dominum nostrum Iesum Christum filium tuum, in unitati Spiritus Sancti Deus, Per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. Lexio Actum Apostolorum En aquellos días, algunos de los que se habían dispersado, huyendo de la persecución desatada después de la muerte de Esteban, llegaron hasta Fenicia, Chipre y Antioquía pero predicaban el Evangelio solamente a los judíos. Sin embargo, hubo entre ellos algunos chipriotas y sirinenses que al llegar a Antioquía comenzaron a dirigirse también a los griegos y a predicarles el Evangelio del Señor Jesús. Y como la mano del Señor estaba con ellos, Muchos se convirtieron y abrazaron la fe. Cuando llegaron estas noticias a la comunidad cristiana de Jerusalén, Bernabé fue enviado a Antioquía. Llegó Bernabé y viendo la acción de la gracia de Dios, se alegró mucho y como era hombre bueno, lleno del Espíritu Santo y de fe, exhortó a todos a que, firmes en su propósito, permanecieran fieles al Señor. Así se ganó para el Señor una gran muchedumbre. Entonces Bernabé partió hacia Tarso en busca de Saulo, y cuando lo encontró, lo llevó consigo a Antioquía. Ambos vivieron durante todo un año en esa comunidad y enseñaron a mucha gente. Allí, en Antioquía, fue donde por primera vez los discípulos 
recibieron el nombre de cristianos. Verbum Domini. Deo gracias. Laudate Dominum Omnes Gentes. Jerusalén gloriosa, el Señor ha puesto en ti su templo. Tú eres más querida para Dios que todos los santuarios de Israel. Laudate Dominum Omnes Gentes. De ti, Jerusalén, ciudad del Señor, se dirán maravillas. Egipto y Babilonia adorarán al Señor. Serán como tus hijos. Laudate Dominum Omnes Gentes. Y de ti, Jerusalén, afirmarán. Todos los pueblos han nacido en ti y el Altísimo es su fortaleza. Laudate Dominum Omnes Gentes. El Señor registrará en el Libro de la Vida a cada pueblo, convertido en ciudadano tuyo, y todos los pueblos te cantarán bailando. Tú eres la fuente de nuestra salvación. Laudate Dominum Omnes Gentes. Aleluya. Aleluya, Aleluya. Aves me voce me amaudium dici dominus, et ego coniosco eos et secundur me. Aleluya, Aleluya, Aleluya. Dominus pobiscum, et com spiritu tuo. Sequentia sancti evangelii secundum Ioannem, gloria tibi Domine. The feast of the dedication was taking place in Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus walked about in the temple area on the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered round him and said to him, How long are you going to keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you do not believe. The works I do in my Father's name testify to me. But you do not believe because you are not among my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can take them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all and no one can take them out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. Verbum Domini. Laus Tibi Christi. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus Tecum, Benedicta tu mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tu Jesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in ora mortis nostre. Amen. Maria auxilium Christianorum, ora pro nobis. In nomine Patris, et Fili, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. They began speaking to the Greeks as well, proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ. Acts chapter 11, verse 24. 
No one can take them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one can take them out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. John chapter 10, verse 29. Nothing happens without God's consent. The Compendium of the Catechism of the Catholic Church, number 57 and 58, teaches us that although God is love and cannot directly nor indirectly will evil, still, by permissive will, He allows evil to visit His people because He knows that something good will come out of it. Aside from having the opportunity to be tested in our faith like Job, if we pass the test of love, God would then shower much more graces on us than before. Our tribulation is also a divine gift because for God to save the world, He has to suffer to ransom mankind from sin, hell, death, and Satan. God allowed suffering to happen like this global coronavirus pandemic so that we can share the cross of Christ and be able to share also the eternal glory of His resurrection in the end when He comes again in glory. It is a known fact that the majority of mankind had become atheists, rebels against God. But God, in His infinite goodness, cannot abandon these people even if they opted to become his enemies. So out of love, he chastises them so that they will convert and become his children again and not become bastards, as the scriptures tell us. Of course, during these prolonged lockdowns, we need faith more than ever to believe in God's divine providence who in his supernatural intelligence definitely has better plans for us after this pandemic crisis. Already the global effect of this pandemic contagion has not only claimed the lives of millions and impoverished both rich and poor nations, but has also pushed almost everyone to breaking point. Depression is now on the rise. Fear of the uncertainty of what the future holds after the global contagion is over is driving many to psychological instability because the new normal that this pandemic has created has already left a big hole in the lives of many. In just a span of two to three months, how many have lost their loved ones, have lost their jobs, homes, have gone hungry, changed their daily routine, to say the least? On a macro level, the world is battling with rising debts and economic collapse. In the micro level, everyone is fighting for survival. In this situation, we as Catholics can be tempted to blame God for allowing this coronavirus to last this long and spread worldwide. What can we do so as not to fall into stress and despair like many others? The scripture readings today bring us a glimpse of light to overcome our challenges. The second reading tells us that those who believe in Christ sold all their belongings, gave the money to the poor to follow Him. They also denied themselves of their self-will and self-love, placing their complete trust in Jesus. Their only security was Him. The good news, however, is this. Jesus does not only provide material security, but more importantly, 
who gives his followers who renounce everything the reward of eternal life in the kingdom of heaven. Which means that during beatific vision, they would experience the full satisfaction of the craving of their hearts forever. In John 28, says this clearly, and I quote, My sheep hears my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. What if Satan would snatch and destroy all the promises made by Jesus to his followers? What would happen to them who place their full trust and security only in Jesus? Our Lord gives his assurance to his followers in the second reading, John 10, 30, and I quote, no one can take them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all, and no one can take them out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. Whatever challenges those who place their complete trust in Jesus' face, all is but a test of faith. The same tests experienced by Abraham, Moses, and Joshua. The bottom line is, on God's part, He always keeps His promise no matter what. The real problem lies in our response of faith or total trust in God. Our biggest challenge is not to lose faith, even when our senses feelings, and reason tell us the contrary. Abraham had the patriarchal faith, which made him unwavering in his confidence in God's promise, even when he did not see or experience the fulfillment of God's promise that he would be the father of many nations. When he died, he only had one son, Isaac. Then it took 14 generations more in Egypt under the protection and custody of the powerful governor Joseph, the younger son of Jacob, for the promise of God to begin to be realized. Nonetheless, Abraham trusted still in God's promise without seeing his children among many nations. This is patriarchal faith. Just believe and leave everything in the hands of God. When and how God would fulfill His promise is no longer our concern, because God will always do it. In the first reading, Acts chapter 11, verse 24, Barnabas, who was sent by Peter from Jerusalem to Angel, told the believers with encouraging words that all must remain faithful to the Lord in firmness of heart. Already when we entrust ourselves to Jesus, we will never stumble along our way to heaven. Even when we are in pitch darkness, because our Lord said in Psalm 119, verse 105, God is a lamb for our feet and a light for our steps. The Feast of Dedication in Jerusalem mentioned in the Acts of the Apostles is a festival of light, also called Hanukkah. This is celebrated in December when night is longer than daylight. Jesus used this feast in order to assure His followers that the way to heaven is narrow, arduous, and even dark. However, they should not worry because he said in John 8, 12, that he is the light of the word. There is no other light that can last that long on the way to the kingdom of God except the light of Christ because his light is everlasting. Jesus tells us 
that the only true security here on earth and in the way to heaven is Him alone. Many place their trust in communism, others in capitalism, or with rich bankers and industrialists. But on the way to heaven, all these trusts would fail, and their followers would then despair and die. When the wolf Satan comes to destroy our soul, only Christ, the true shepherd, will be our defender who can destroy the devil. Although we ordinarily place our trust in bishops, cardinals, and priests in order to trust God, for Jesus told us so, yet, if some of these representatives, as Our Lady of Akita and Fatima warned us, become wolves and no longer are outer Christus, then we can always go directly to the two pillars of salvation, to Jesus in the Eucharist and to Mother Mary. A victim priest, bishop, and cardinal are true representative of Christ because as altar pastores, they will offer their lives for the sheep to save their souls. Jesus, really present in the Eucharist, body, blood, soul, and divinity, promised to be with us until the end of times. The same Jesus who sits at the right hand of the Father in heaven, worshipped by millions and millions of angels and saints, is the same one in the Eucharist 24-7. Since the Good Shepherd is vigilant, the sheep fears no evil even at night, which says the hour of darkness, because Jesus is there, praying for his flock, casting out Satan with his deliverance prayer. Man easily falls prey to sin, death, hell, and Satan. By his attachments to the allurements of this word, but even if we forget God, provided we pray the rosary or repent of our sins, Jesus and Mary will snatch us away from the brink of hell. The story of St. Francis de Chantal is a beautiful example of what it means to place one's complete trust in God, especially in moments of trials and tribulations in our life. St. James Francis de Chantal had a very bitter and dark past. She was born in Dijon, France, and was a daughter of the royalist president of the parliament of Burgundy. Her mother died when she was only a year and a half years old. This made our saint grow up feeling deprived of a mother's love and care, and often wondered why God allowed such evil on her. But with a father who played both the mother and father to her, St. James Francis found solace in such unique situation. It was because her father entrusted her to the care of the Immaculate Heart of Mary whom she had a great devotion. And sure enough, Mother Mary took care of St. Jane as she manifested herself to the young girl several times in her life. In fact, St. Jane would later on use this bitterness as a source of grace to establish a congregation of sisters who would cater to the old, the sickly, and the broken-hearted. At 21, Jane married the Baron of Chantal, who unfortunately died in a shooting accident at the age of 28, and four children, the broken-hearted Baroness, did not despair 
as most widows would do. With Mother Mary truly present in her life, St. Jane Francis was then inspired to take a vow of chastity for life. Several tragedies in her own family prior to her husband's death somehow trained this young saint to a life of victimhood. Not long ago, her two children died, then both her sister and stepmother, who acted as Jane's own mother for almost 20 years, also died. These were bitter experiences because she loved them very much. This made her face the death of her husband with calmness and resignation. Although deep in her heart, she would still hardly forgive the killer of her husband. Faithless people would always blame God or even His existence with the usual complaint. If a good God exists, why does He allow these horrendous sufferings to happen to me? They would immediately conclude, because God does not exist. But consecrated to the Blessed Virgin Mary, Our Lady guided St. James Francis step by step on how to cope with every difficulty. Instead of cursing her lot, Our Blessed Mother taught St. Jane Francis how to manage well the estate of her husband, make it profitable, and inspired her how to handle her difficult father-in-law. Many relatives and friends of the saint even wondered why she was never resentful of God. She instead told everyone how grateful she was to God for the interior miracles that had happened in her life. That is how she had learned to love the cross with a smile. Even when she hurt so much, gaining a little money from the estate, she shared her material blessings to the poor by providing alms to all needy persons in her neighborhood and nursing personally so many sick people in the area. St. Jane Francis, however, struggled with one thing, and Mother Mary knew this. Her heart, which was still aching, could not forgive the killer of her husband. But through the help of a holy bishop, St. Francis of Sales, who was known to be a great promoter of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, St. James Francis managed to finally forgive her husband's killer. Eventually, St. Francis de Sales became our saint's spiritual director, who from then on made great spiritual strides in her spiritual life. It was St. Francis Sales who persuaded St. Jane Francis de Chantal to found a congregation after she provided for the future of her two remaining children. It was this religious congregation, the visitation of Mary, that the Sacred Heart of Jesus would later appear to one of its sisters, St. Margaret Maria Lacoque, to commence the most grandiose devotion to Jesus, the devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus with the nine First Friday Reparation Vigil as a source of salvation for many souls. In all the devotions to Jesus, this is the only devotion that promises devotees that their names would be written in the Sacred Heart of Jesus with an indelible mark. What does this praise written in the Heart of Jesus mean? but that the names of those who keep this devotion would have their names written in the book of life permanently. 
In short, it is an assurance to all that if we entrust ourselves totally to God, which presumes consecration to the sacred heart of Jesus, God guarantees our salvation, provided we practice the four elements frequently or daily, if possible, until death. Confession, adoration, rosary, and Eucharistic sacrifice of the Mass. Now with the alliance of the two hearts, the Sacred Heart devotion is adjoined with the devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, to the practice of the First Friday, First Saturday Reparation Vigil. This is what God means when He, through His permissive will, allows evil to happen to us because He knows something good will come out of it. St. James enduring patience in accepting our trials with total resignation and trust in God bore us today this wonderful and greatest devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus and the Immaculate Heart of Mary, the two pillars of our salvation and the devotion of the end times. Let us then entrust ourselves totally to Jesus, the Good Shepherd, by daily renewing our consecration to the hearts of Jesus and Mary, even amidst our trials and difficulties. When we are confronted with tribulations, let us run to the Blessed Sacrament and spend at least an hour of adoration before the Eucharist, where we can pour out all our trials, our difficulties on Him. For He is our pillar of salvation. Let us convert all difficulties into acts of reparation in union with the passion and death of Jesus and the infinite merits of the Sacred Heart of Jesus and the Immaculate Heart of Mary. For the conversion of hardened sinners healing of the sick and casting out of Satan among our friends, family, and extended family members. Lastly, let us remember always what Jesus told us in Philippians chapter 3, verse 17, to love our cross. For Jesus said that many are acting as enemies of Christ because they are enemies of the cross. Again, St. Paul reminds us in Colossians chapter 1, verse 24, I consider it a privilege and joy to suffer. What is he still wanting in the sufferings of Christ, in his mystical body, the church? God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Benedictus es Domine Deus Universi, que da tua agitate e cepimus panem, quem tibi operimus, proctum vitis operis manum omen, ex conobis viet, panis vitae. Benedictus es Domine. Per lui sacred pini misterium e pichama de militatis consortis, que humanitatis nostri pire dignatis as particeps.
Benedictus es Domine Deus in Ebersi, que era tua agitate e cebrimus vino. Quo tibio perimus, fructum vitis operis manum hominum, ex conobis viet, potes spiritalis. Benedictus Deus in seco. In spirito militati, et animo contrito, suscipiamo la terza piet sacrificium nostrum in conspecto tu oggi placi tibi Domine. Lava-me, Domine, a beniquitate mea, munda mea, a picata mea. Orati pratis, ut meum et besum sacrificium, aicitabili fiat apo Deum Patrim Omnipotentem. Susipiat Dominus sacrificium de manibus top tuis, ad ladem e gloriam nomini sui, ad utilitatem coque nostrum, tutiesco ecclesia sui sancte. Lord, give us joy to these Easter mysteries. Let the continuous offering of this sacrifice by which we are renewed, bring us to eternal happiness. Per Christum Dominum Nostrum. Amen. Dominus Pobiscum, et comis Spiritu Tuo, sursum coda, abemus an Dominum, gratias agamus, Domino Dei Nostro, dignum et justumis. Veredinium et justum es ecumit salutari te quidim domini, omni tempori compiteri. Se te ne noc putissimum gloriosus predicare, com pasca nostrum imulatus es Christus. Que abitustate distructa, renovantor universa diecta, et vite nobis in Christo reparator integritas. Co propter propusis pascalibus gaudis, totes in nobis terrarum mundus exultat. Serit superne bertutis atque angelici potestatis, hymnum glori tui concinum, sine fine dicentes. Sanctus, 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 Dominus Dei Sabaut, planes un celi terre, gloria tua, Hosanna in excelsis, benedictus qui benit in nomini Domini, Hosanna in excelsis. Te egitu clementissimi, Pater, per Iesum Christum, pilium tuum, Dominum nostrum, supplice sugamus appetimus. O te accepta, beis et benedicas, ec dona, ec munera, ec sancta, sacrificia elevata. In primis que tibi operimus, preclesia tua sancta catolica, quam pacificare custodire adonare et regere dineris, tot orbe terrarum, Una cum famula tu, Papa nostro, Francesco, e rantisti di nostro, Roberto, e Stefano, Palma de los Santos, Tobias, Benaventura, e tonibus ortodoxi, sacchi cattolici, et apostolici, fidei cultoribus. Memento Domine, pomolorum, pomolorum che tuarum, Therese Hall, Caroline Kelly and partner David, and Donna and son Joseph for conversion, deliverance, and healing of the past. For the court settlement of Jesus Cepeda. For the Vienna praying group of the two hearts, holiest hearts. Sanctification clerics and lay intention of Clara, Christine, Adriana, Peter, Tanya Maria, and for the poor souls in purgatory and thanksgiving to God. Tara Sharma, may God bless her and grow in her Catholic faith. For 
the wedding for Sarah Jason. It is a circumstance that we are going to be able to do this. But what is the time of the time? The time of the time of the sacrifice of the people, the whiskey of the people, the redemption of the people, the people 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 of the people. Communicantes and memoriam venerantes in primis gloriosa semper virgines Maria. Genetrices deit Domini Nossi Esu Christi, seret beati Iosip Iusdem Virginis Sponsi, beatorum apostolorum ac martyrum tuorum, Petrit Pauli Andrei, Iacobi Ioannes, Domi Iacobi Pelipe, Bartolome Matei, Simoni Sittadei, Lini Cleti Clementi Sixti, Cornelius Cipriani, Lorenzi I. Crisogoni, Ioannis et Pauli Cosmi Damiani, et tamium sanctorum tuorum, quorum meritis picibusque concedes, ut in nonibus protectionis timoniamur axilio. Angigitur oblationem servitutis nostri, seret cumti familia tui quesimus domine, placatus et cipias de esquinosas in tua pace disponas, ad capitena damnationi nos seripi, in electorum tuorum iubias grege numerari. Quam oblationem tu Deus in onibus quesimus, benedictam ad scriptam ratam, racionabili mancetabili inque pacere dineris, nobis corpus, sanguis fiat delectissimi, filitui Domini nossi Esu Christi. Qui pridie quam pateretur e cepit panem in sanctas ad venerabilis manas suas. Elevatis oculis in celum ad te Deum Patrin su onnipotentem, Tivi gracias agens, benedixit, fregit, dedit qui discipulis suis dicens. Ac cipite, et manducate ex hoc omnes. Oc es enim, corpus meum. Quat probovis radetur. Simili modo post comcinatumis, acipiens et un preclarum calicem, in sanctas ab venerabilis manas suas, item tibi gracias agens benedixit, dedicui discipulis suis dicens. Accipite et bibite ex eo omnes, hic es enim calix sanguinis mei, novi et eterne testamenti que probovis et promultis epondetur, en remissionem peccatorum. Oc facite in meum commemorationem.
mysterium fidei, modem tuam annunciamus Domine, et tuam resurrectione incompitemur, donec benius. Undet memoris Domini nos servi tui, serit plebs tua sancta is dem Christi fili tui Domini nostri, tam beati passiones, nec non et ab imperes resurrectionis, sedit in celus glorios ascensiones, offerimus preclare maestati tue, de tuis donis ac datis, osciam puram, osciam sanctam, osciam immaculatam, panem sanctam vitae eterne, et calicem salutes perpetue. Supraque propiciac sereno bulturis picere dignei secetta abere, sicuti accepta abere, dignatus es munera puiriti iustia abel. Et sacrificium paciaca nostri abre, qua tibi optulit sumus accedus tuus Melchisedec, sanctum sacrificium immaculatum osciam. Supplices tergamus onnipotens Deus, iubeic per pere per manus sancti angeli tui, in sublime altare tuum, in conspectu divino maestatis tue, quod curid ac saltaris participatione, sacrosantum pilitui corpus et sanguinim sum serimus. Omni benedictioni celesti et gratia ripliamur. Per Christum Dominum nostrum. Amen. Memento etiam Domine, pomelorum, pomelorum citoarum. Aiban, macobic, mato. Qui nos spicisserum consigno fidei in dormunt in somo pacis. Ipsis Domine, in onibus in Christo qui scientibus locum repingeri lucis et pacis, or indulgias deprecamur. Nobis coque picatoribus pamulis tuis, di multitudine miserationum tuarum esperantibus, pati maliquam suscitate e donare dineris. Con tui sanctis apostolis martiribus, con Ioane Stefano Mattia Barnaba, Ignacio Alexandro, Marcellino Petro, felicitate perpetua Agatha Lucia, Agnete Cicilia Anastasia, et onibus sanctis tuis, intra corum nos consortium nestimato meriti, sit veni equesimus largitur admite, per Christum Dominum nostrum, per queme ocnia, o Domini semper bona crea sanctificas vivificas, benedicis prestas nobis. Per ipsum et cum ipso et in ipso, est ibidei Patri Onnipotenti, in unitati Spiritus Sancti, omnes honor et gloria, per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. Oremus, precepti salutaribus moniti, et divina institutione formati, audemus dicere. Pater noster, qui es in celis, sanctificetur nomen tuum, adveniat regnum tuum, piat voluntas tua, sicur in celo et in terra, panem nostrum quotidianum da nobis odie, et dimita nobis debita nostra, sicur et nos dimitimus debitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentationem, sed libera nos a malo. Amen. Libera nos quesimus Domini ab onibus malis, da propicius pacem in Jebus nostris. A topi misericordia tui aiuti, et appicatus simus semper liberi, et ab onne perturbazione sicuri, expectantes beatam spem, et ad bentum salvatoris nostri Iesu Christi, che a tuo misregnum et potesta si gloria in secula. Domini Iesu Christi, quid existi apostolis tuis, pacem relinco bovis, pacem meandobovis, 
ne respice spicata nostra, sed fidem ecclesi tue, e anque secundum voluntatem tuam, pacificari cudonari dineris, qui bibi si trenes in secula seculorum. Amen. Pax Domini, sit semper bobiscum, et cum spiritu tuo. Et cum ixio corpore sanguinis Domini nostri Iesu Christi, pieta cepientibus nomis in vita eterna. Agnus Dei qui tolis peccato mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei qui tolis peccato mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei qui tolis peccato mundi, dona nobis pacem. Domini Esu Christi, pili Dei vivi, qui experimentati patris, cooperanti Spiritu Santo, per morte in tuo mondo e vicasti. Libera e per oxoc santum corpus sangue di tuo onibus in vitatibus meis in versus malis. Ac mi tuvi semper in herere mandati sa ti nunca non separare per me. Night myself, but I be master, shall the steins being overdrawn the whole way. Please, the minions of me, the mediatics of all grace, see me obtain with this presentation to the blood of Christ, the Rome of Solid Trinity. In you and all the masses celebrated throughout the world for the past thousand and twenty years of operation for our sins. Deliverance of the holy souls in purgatory, relief of the sick and dying to possess. Conversion and fidelity and other sinners. Perseverance and digestion and unity of mind and heart of all our members in the city, God, the year of the army. In love, set in Christ and holiness, the guys and the patriarch of this earth, the Lord of the earth, the Lord of the earth. The Lord of the earth, 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 Ecce agnus Dei, ecce che tolit peccato mondi, beati qui ecce non magni bucati sunt. Domini non sum dignus, ut intres ut tecto meum, se tantum dic verbo et sanavitur anima mea. Domini non sum dignus, ut intres ut tecto meum, se tantum dic verbo et sanavitur anima mea. Domini non sum dignus, ut intres ut tecto meum, 
se tanto in dic verbo et sanabitor animo mea. Corpus Christi custiet me in vita mi tena. Sanguis Christi, cus iat me in vita mi teno. O potu et pati Christum et resurgere a motuvis, edita entrare in gloriam suam, alleluia. Para todos aquellos que no pueden recibir a Jesús en el Santísimo Sacramento, Ofrecemos la siguiente oración. Oh Jesús, me dirijo hacia ti en el tabernáculo santo, donde vives escondido por amor a mí. Te amo, mi Dios. No puedo recibirte en la Sagrada Comunión. Ven, sin embargo, y visítame con tu gracia. Ven espiritualmente a mi corazón. Purifícalo, santifícalo. Hazlo parecido al tuyo. Señor, no soy digno de que entres en mi casa, pero una palabra tuya bastará para sanar mi alma. Amén. Les pedimos a todos que recen con nosotros esta oración de protección para todos los afectados por el virus corona en todo el mundo. Jesucristo, el Rey de Gloria ha venido en paz. Dios se hizo hombre, y la Palabra se hizo carne. Cristo nació de una virgen. Cristo sufrió. Cristo fue crucificado. Cristo murió. Cristo resucitó de entre los muertos. Cristo ascendió al cielo. Cristo vence. Cristo reina. Cristo ordena. Que Cristo nos proteja de todos los ataques diabólicos, guerras, calamidades, especialmente de plagas, enfermedades que conducen a la muerte intempestiva. Cristo pasó en el medio de ellos en paz, y la palabra se hizo carne. Cristo está con nosotros junto con María. Huyan espíritus enemigos, porque el león de la tribu de Judá, el descendiente de David ha triunfado. Santo Dios, Santo Fuerte, Santo Inmortal, ten piedad de nosotros. Oremos. Lord, may this celebration of our redemption help us in this life and lead us to eternal happiness. Per Christum Dominum Nostrum. Amen. Dominus pobiscum et cum spiritu tuo, benedicat vos omnipotens Deus, Pater et Filius et Spiritus Sanctus. Amen. Ite misa es. Deo gratias. Dios te salve, María, llena eres de gracia. El Señor es contigo. Bendita tú eres entre todas las mujeres, y bendito es el fruto de tu vientre, Jesús. Santa María, Madre de Dios, 
ruega por nosotros pecadores, ahora y en la hora de nuestra muerte. Amén. Dios te salve María, llena eres de gracia, el Señor es contigo. Bendita tú eres entre todas las mujeres, y bendito es el fruto de tu vientre Jesús. Santa María, Madre de Dios, ruega por nosotros pecadores, ahora y en la hora de nuestra muerte. Amén. Dios te salve María, llena eres de gracia, el Señor es contigo. Bendita tú eres entre todas las mujeres, y bendito es el fruto de tu vientre Jesús. Santa María, Madre de Dios, ruega por nosotros pecadores, ahora y en la hora de nuestra muerte. Amén. San Miguel Arcángel, defiéndenos en la batalla. Sé nuestro amparo contra las perversidades y acechanzas del demonio. Reprima de Dios, pedimos suplicantes. Y tú, Príncipe de la Milicia Celestial, arroja al infierno con el divino poder a Satanás y a todos los otros espíritus malignos que andan dispersos por el mundo, buscando la perdición de las almas. Amén. <tose> 